OK, so we're going to solve this equation where we need to find all the values of x so that the floor function of x squared minus 1 equals the ceiling function of 1 minus x squared. And for our approach, we'll start by just considering the functions x squared minus x and 1 minus x squared without the floor and ceiling functions. Look at what these look like together on a graph, and then eventually we'll take the ceiling function and the floor function of each of these to find out where they're going to be equal to each other. So we start with just x squared minus x. If we consider the graph of y equals x squared minus x, you can just see by factorising that we're going to have roots when x is 0 and x is 1. And for y equals 1 minus x squared, this factorises as 1 plus x times 1 minus x. So we get a solution, a root where x is minus 1 and another root where x is 1. So if we draw these together on the same set of axes, so let's start with x squared minus x. We've got a root at 0 and we've got a root at 1. And it's going to be a positive quadratic, so taking this sort of shape. And if we draw on y equals 1 minus x squared, we've got a root at minus 1. We've got our other root is at positive 1. We also have a maximum point just when x is 0, where y would be equal to 1. So this quadratic is going to look like this, roughly. And then we can see we're going to be interested in this region where they're going to be quite close to each other. But then if we go off to the left, because the floor function of x squared minus x is roughly equal to x squared minus x, we can get something really big, and here we'll get something really small for the ceiling function of 1 minus x squared. And similarly over on the right, this is too big, this is too small. So we only really need to focus on this region where they're quite close to each other. And we're going to be really interested, because we'll take the floor function and the ceiling function, and we'll be really interested in when these values of the function lie between certain integers. So, for example, if we're between 0 and 1, then the floor function is going to round down to 1, whereas the ceiling function would round up to 1. And similarly, we can go up to between 1 and 2, the floor function of x squared minus x, between 1 and 2 would round down to 1. We don't really care what happens above here because it's just going to be far too big to be equal to the ceiling function of the other function. Then we'll also go down at the bottom to minus 1. So we're going to be interested now in just finding, first of all, what are all of the x values where we reach each of these integer points. So you can see here we've got some of them already on our graph. But let's start with this one here where x squared minus x is equal to 2. So if we're trying to solve x squared minus x equals 2, we can just write this as x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0, which factorises as x plus 1 x minus 2 equals 0. So we get solutions when x is minus 1 and when x is positive 2. So this is saying we've got here x is minus 1, and here this solution is x equals positive 2. So this is a minus 1 we've got a positive 2 for our x-coordinates of these points, where x squared minus x is equal to 2. So then where is x squared minus x equal to 1 at these different points? We can write this as x squared minus x equals 1, so x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Then we can solve this, perhaps using the quadratic formula if you like, and we get x equals a half plus or minus root 5 over 2. So one of our solutions here is actually the golden ratio. So the negative solution here, where this is equal to 1, is going to be a half minus root 5 over 2, and this is our x value here. And here we're saying that our x value is the positive solution, so a half plus root 5 over 2. So then where we're equal to 0 here, this is just x equals 0, and this point here is x equals 1. So we still label this x equals 0, x equals 1. We can label up here as well, we've got x equals 0, at this point where we meet the y-axis. So now we've found all of these crucial integer values of our function, what the x-coordinate is at each point. So let's do the same now for y equals 1 minus x squared. So first of all, we start with here in the middle, 1 minus x squared equals 1 just happens when x is 0. And we've also got these two solutions where it's equal to 0. This is just where x is plus or minus 1. So we've got minus 1 there. And the only ones that we really need to calculate now is where 1 minus x squared is equal to minus 1. So 1 minus x squared equals minus 1 rearranges to just x squared needs to be equal to 2. So x equals 
plus or minus the square root of 2. So here we've got the positive root of 2. Here is where 1 minus x squared equals minus 1. And here we've got x equals negative root 2 gives us 1 minus x squared equals minus 1 again there. So now I'll draw a bigger, neater version of this picture, which we can use to find the actual values of the floor and ceiling functions of these respective functions. So now the harder algebraic work is done, we just need to finish the sketch, then we'll be able to read off the values of x for which our equation is going to be satisfied. So let's start by drawing in the ceiling function of 1 minus x squared. So over on the left, when this is less than minus 1, this would round up to minus 1, or beyond when it's less than minus 2, it would round up to minus 2, but you can see the two aren't going to be equal to each other in that region, so we can avoid the rest of that. So then from here, we would jump up to between minus 1 and 0, it would round up to 0. So we draw this with the non-filled-in circle to denote that it's not actually equal to 0 at uh, x is minus root 2. So then when it's equal to 0, it is actually equal to 0 when we take the ceiling function. So we draw this as our filled-in dot. But then after there, as soon as we're above 0, we start to round up to 1. So we can draw in our non-filled-in dot to denote that we're jumping up there. Then actually everything, even at this maximum point where 1 minus x squared is equal to 1, all of these values, until we get to 0 again, would just round up to 1. So we can draw in here a non-filled-in dot, and everything in between this is going to give us 1 when we take the ceiling function of 1 minus x squared. So then at this point we're back down to 0, so it, 0 would round up to become 0, and we see there's a nice symmetry here that this goes along until we have a discontinuity. When 1 minus x squared is finally equal to minus 1, it now rounds up to minus 1, and then everything below this again rounds up to minus 1 and then goes off and takes some values which are too small to be equal to the ceiling function of x squared minus x. So now let's do the same thing for x squared minus x. Remember we're taking the floor function now so everything is rounding down. So over here on the left we've got stuff which is bigger than 2 so this would round down to 2 or it would be something even bigger which isn't really going to make a difference to our solutions of the equation. But then from this point, as soon as we're below 2, we round down to actually get 1. So you can see we're going to be equal to each other. So we just draw a second non-filled-in dot here. Up until this point where x squared minus x is actually equal to 1, at which point the floor function is still equal to 1. But then this is our final value. And after here, we drop down to x squared minus x would round down to 0 in this region from here to here and it would still be equal to 0 when the function is actually equal to 0, so we can draw the filled in dots there. So then between x is 1 and x is 0 here, x squared minus x takes values between 0, and it only actually goes down to there's a minimum point at minus a quarter there, so it definitely doesn't go beneath minus 1. So our function would jump down here, it would be equal to minus 1 when we take the floor function of this all the way up until this point here. So then we can put in when we're actually equal to 0, this would jump down, so it would round down to minus 1. But when we're equal to 0, the floor function of x squared minus x would still be 0. So now we can draw in, there's another filled in blue dot and a red dot here, so it's starting to get a little bit messy, but then our x squared minus x goes between 0 and 1 in this interval here, up to a half plus root 5 over 2. So all of these values up until here will still be equal to 0. So at this point, we've actually got a picture where there's again a bit of overlap here, but only up until this point where 1 minus x squared is equal to minus 1. So you can check if you like, this is where x is root 2, that's about 1.4, and this other point is where x is a half plus root 5 over 2, this is about 1.6. So the sketch is indeed accurate that this should be slightly over to the right, so it's here, this root 2 is our cutoff point for the two being equal to each other. So now we're just finishing off with x squared minus x. So when this is actually equal to 1, it rounds down and should be equal to 1 there. Sorry. So this should be a non-filled-in dot down here. And then between 1 and 2, it's going to round down to 1 until we're actually equal to 2. So after this point, 
it just is equal to 2 or something bigger. But there's no way that the equation can be satisfied beyond there because our floor function of x squared minus x is too big and the ceiling function of 1 minus x squared is too small. So you can see we've got two regions now where we get this possible overlap. So this first region is going from, let's just label this slightly more neatly, it's going to go from minus 1 up to a half minus root 5 over 2. So x isn't actually allowed to be equal to minus 1. So we've got minus 1 is strictly less than x, which is less than or equal to a half minus root 5 over 2. So at this point they're still actually both equal to 1, so they are equal to each other. And then our second part of the region which is over here, goes from x is 1, and it's allowed to be equal to 1, so 1 less than or equal to x, but then we stop as soon as x is equal to, this is where we have root 2 is this point here, which is where they stop to overlap, so x has got to be strictly less than root 2. So you can see then that our solution to this equation is all the values of x, first of all between minus 1 and a half minus root 5 over 2, and secondly all of the values between 1 and root 2.